I have definitely always felt weird. Weird to me is just being comfortable in your own skin and just expressing yourself even though it might not be what everyone else is doing. Don't be afraid to be weird. It is happening. Ah! My name is Rachel Maxey, and I generally describe myself as a costumer and content creator. Yeah, that's, that's generally what I, how I describe myself. So my work is really inspired by anything I consume in my life, like pop culture or fairy tales, and especially this time of year, I tend to go towards the more creepy side just blending everything nerdy and whimsical all together. For me, creating the sort of content I make, I feel like is definitely full circle from when I was a kid. Of course, my favorite holiday is Halloween, so every single year I would just be counting down the days until Halloween, until I could dress up or pick my costume or do my makeup or have my mom help me with my makeup. I think the first time I got a camera, I was 12 or 13. I'm pretty sure I begged my parents to get me one. I then started venturing into making really <laughs> embarrassing little YouTube videos. I would try recreating my favorite movie scenes. Uh, so this is the kind of flavor of home videos I would be making and forcing my friends to do. <laughs> our own little Hollywood productions in my neighborhood growing up. Actually, uh, there's some special effects coming up here anyway. Oh, she slapped me. Ouch. Oh my god, production value. <laughs> oh no. I did end up going into film school. During film school, that's where my love of really heavily costuming things took off and then sort of realizing that I wanted to dress like that all the time. <laughs> like making myself my own main character, <laughs> kind of. I felt like having that alternative style from what you normally see was a way for me to set myself apart on social media. And as my vintage style grew, I noticed that people were really connecting with that on Instagram. I think people, just like in real life, generally tend to appreciate seeing someone dress a little bit different than the norm. The more eyes I had on my page, the more people were asking for video content and video tutorials on how they can do the hair that I was doing. And so that led into me starting my YouTube channel. So it is officially my first day as my own boss. As I ventured into full time, I was able to take more time to make stuff. I had never really sewn much before I had started my YouTube channel. And that was something that I started on camera and I tried to include the whole process, messing up. So I think a lot of times when you are watching a YouTube channel of someone who really knows what they're doing, it can feel really, really intimidating and overwhelming. So I wanted to kind of assure people that you don't just learn things overnight. Personally, I feel like chaos and mess is part of the fun and part of the entire process, and you really can't learn without it. One of my favorite parts of cosplay and costuming is being able to portray your favorite characters. And for me, generally that comes from either characters I grew up with or I tend to really gravitate towards really brave and badass women. <laughs> There's just something special about making that costume and doing your makeup like them and your hair like them and putting the costume on and you just feel empowered. Maxaline started in 2019 and it started as just a way for me to celebrate my love for the Halloween season. So I do 13 looks in the month of October, whether that be my favorite characters from horror films or dark fairy tales, or even just outfits that are inspired by probably pumpkins. It's a lot of work, but it's something that I look forward to 
all year long, and it's something that I start planning my 13 characters probably in January. Okay, so I made this skull last year for my Jack Skellington costume, and so instead of just sitting around in my attic, I am gonna wreck it. And so what I'm working on now is sort of a skeleton pirate woman. <laughs> And so for this, I really, really want to just make everything look really grimy and gross and like she's been dead for, you know, 300 years or something. I'm sure that's a lovely noise. I really love just the entire vibe of October. I think people become a lot more brave and they get excited to make their costumes. And that's just something that I like to do all year long. So seeing people get excited about it in October makes me really, really happy. I'm really, really thankful for social media as much as sometimes it can be a little hard to navigate. I think it's really, really helped me get really more passionate about the things that I'm passionate about and share it with people and see how they get excited about it too. Something I've definitely had to overcome is overthinking the entire process because I think, you know, again, it comes with sort of comparing yourself to other people and seeing other really, really clever ideas that people come up with and then comparing your own ideas to that. And something I'm trying to focus on, especially lately, is just making videos that make me really, really excited. And if other people are really excited, then that's awesome. And if not, that's okay because I had a ton of fun making them. I hit 1 million subscribers a couple months ago. It's wild because it was sort of this mythical number that I had just in my head from when I started my channel. I was sort of thinking, you know, if I ever hit a million, that'd be crazy. Um, and so I did, and it's crazy. <laughs> it's weird to think that many people actually care about what I put out into the world. Little me, little 13-year-old me, I think, I'd like to think she'd think I'm pretty cool. I'm kind of doing now what I thought would be impossible back then. And so if I could just tell her anything and just keep on doing what you're doing, keep on being weird and keep making weird videos with your friends because someday it's gonna be your job and it's gonna be really, really fulfilling.